We go for our first battle. Gunrunners Red Team are defending against Isuba Blue Team on the attack. Both teams have kind of similar blue camouflages, so don't let that fool you. Just try and look at the health bar colours above their heads. Yep, we can see here they're going to boost Ondrax in the Bacha, Danny and uh, Ondrax will be doing that. They're close enough to each other should work out. This time Danny not with the small uh, fire extinguisher like he had last time. Ondrax just about made her, so that's important. Some blind shots coming out in the meantime as well, but this defense from gun runners, we'll have to see if it works out because the Suba can at any moment in time relocate back towards the eastern side. I just checked, Overus does have binoculars on his IS-7, so if he does want to go back towards that 9-0 line there, you can see it almost, well, here we see it. Overus in the IS-7 with binoculars, this allows him the rotation towards the eastern side as well as if they so chose to do it, because we have seen what it is capable of, but for now, they seem content to just take the left side of the map because there's not that many contesting coming out from Gunners just yet. They're sitting far back trying to defend from the rails. Unji's going to be spotting and Storm's going to be shooting. And I'm going to see if this works out because if either of them gets spotted, it's game over. Lorraine RT will wreck the STRV. Yeah, the STRV has to come out of siege mode to do that. And those vital seconds is usually enough time for RT to zone in and get a connecting shot, which is... Going to go right through the top of that armor as there's Overus is spotted and Storm gets a shot over. Not exactly what it is, but Overus actually, yep, gets hit. Oh, there's, wow. Swing and a miss from artillery, just fell short, sadly. Yeah, but they know where he is, that's the thing. Uh, won't take that long before those bushes get blind fired. They should be aware of the positions that they can possibly be spotted from. Overus can peek. Check bushes on the A line, for example, like A3, A4, there's bushes. He doesn't get spotted from that. Well, then it has to be B4, it has to be A5. And with 7 minutes 50 seconds left, I mean, if he gets a connection, it's still going to be a rip in pepperonis for the SDRV. Yes, certainly, unless we're watching artillery dead on right now, you'll just suddenly see the health bar of Storm get dropped as it connects with them. I'm pretty sure they'll try and find blind fire another one in there in just a second. Well, he has 9 seconds left on reload now, and... Seems to be looking towards Unji's bushes. Okay. Try and decide where he wants to shoot at the moment. Over this meanwhile, hiding behind this rock like it's his... I think he's aiming directly at Unji. Oof, that was close. You see the tree falling down there, actually, beside Unji from the view here of Over us. Very defensive here from Gunrunners, just taking a position all across the ridge line. And E-Suba really dacky. They're making a probe for one, but... Do they have time to rotate into two? They still don't have time to rotate, but they have to do it soon-ish. Because Gunrunners is going to take map control at that point. ISM is going to take a long time to rotate. Unchi is actually a little bit further than the Bush EDT blind shot. Actually a little bit more RT safe even as well. And EDT is going to make another shot soon. But you can see in the meantime Gunrunners is starting to take that sudden side. So it becomes harder and harder to rotate. And they pushed over us over the rails. And he's going to go aggressive to try and spot somebody. Over us going up there. He is spotted out there by Unji. So Storm gets a shot in. Nice one right through the front of him, actually. 4 3 3. It's a nice roll there. Now they have artillery as well. So Saigo could always plop a shot over onto Over us anytime he wants to as well. EDT is going to go for Storm. He saw him there. He knows to aim just a slight bit. There's the connection from Arty onto Over us. Dead driver, tracked, and fuel rack Unji already spotted. damaged at the moment. Unji is spotted, he's going to go down lightning quick as Andrew and Lucan get focused into him. Unji's down, but at the meantime, Unji actually got the kill on Overus, so it's traded for trade. IS7 at the moment for Batcha. Well, I think still think that Storm's going to have to run because they know where he is, and he actually gets a connection, and if they push down that rail now and spot him, that's two tier tens down, which they should do. They should send another Batcha to go spot him. RT aims on that location and kill the STRV. The moment they're not going for it, Enrico gets splashed here, so track damage and a dead driver on him and his object. So it looks like the fire's been spread out at the moment from EDT, and Storm's able to get away safely. Yeah, the let Storm escape, I feel like that's a mistake from Asuba. I feel like they shouldn't have allowed this SDRV to get away. They could have easily traded him with a bad shot rushing down, getting towards him, spotting him, RT. Another bad shot, this one gets on his side. They would at least trade one for one. Most likely, they'd get the ba the STRV and the Bachelor could survive, so a little bit slow there, I'd say, from Isuba. Yep, but on the plus side, um, Isuba have got a bit more control over the number one base here. Yeah, I mean, they start, can start capping now, which is a great thing for them, and it seems like they're going to try 
and group up for the climb with four tanks. At least that's what it seems like they're posturing for. Frawley, a little bit of an overextension there going out, taking two shots for three shots now for nothing as Danny can get a shot onto him as well. Now, he's down to pretty much half health at the moment. Can he connect any shots in with Daki? Sticks his head up again and gets shot again, but Danny nice takes shots on the move. Danny's going to go down here. That was a mis... <laughs> Danny, what are you doing, friend? I mean, it took very long for his Subat to get in position to shoot him, but they finally do and remove him. I mean, you could see there, Danny was in the open next to the rails for so long. And it took Suba very, very long as well to actually get ready. And it seems like they're going to go... Are they going to go for a push here? I mean, it seems like it, because they're all on reloads, and perhaps they're going to go and push because they have the advantage. Artie is going to go into... Is it cap circle? Is he going to use Yeah, yeah he's going to start capping. Okay, now this is what I was going to mention earlier on. Um, Nile was able to do a truck ton of damage there from Storm's position yesterday, and when Gohard were defending against... Uh, who did Gohard play Swift. yesterday? Swift. So Storm has the potential to do massive damage. Now another key thing as well is when this S tank drives away, it's the same speed in reverse pretty much as it does go forward. So it's really quick at getting out of trouble. Yeah, but the thing is they just want to kill tanks here to make sure RT can cap and EDT actually got blind hit, which is annoying, but he will survive. So he goes spotted now as well and the engagement's about to start. Combat getting singled out here by Storm and Enrico as Martin comes over the background to be able to give them a covering fire. Now, Combat does get dropped here by Storm, but now the next one focused is Tomasek actually getting the kill onto Enrico and then Tomasek gets the kill on Storm as well. So, double kill for him and E Super are just looking to close this one out by just killing all the tanks of gun runners. Yeah, they can kill, they can cap, they can do whatever they want. A nice closure of this first round here, pushing them out, and all this time they're still capping. Frawley can go back towards the cap and even capture that as well if he wants to. Ondrax is going to run out of ammo very soon as well. And when these bad shots come off reload from, his, from uh, Isuba, they'll just close out the game. It's Ondrax coming back there to reload as Saigo tries to go for the blind shot there. Shotgun into Frawley's face, but it didn't work. Frawley has one more shot. Can he get round before Saigo reloads? This is going to be interesting between the two. Can he connect the shot? Will Frawley go for it? Find out next week. <laughs> it's like Frawley doesn't want to commit. Saigo knows someone's coming behind him. He's shot. Frawley's going to come around. No, nope, but it's Andrew that actually picks up the kill. So only two tanks left here in Gunrunners. Isuba can go in and three cap the base if they wanted to, or just sit in the base and force Martin and Andrax to come at them. I mean, they're still taking damage here at the end. It's not 100% certain. Looking, coming in here on Martin, but there's additional crossfire there as well from Tomasek. You saw Artie trying to get a shot over from EDT there, but missed. Andrax now only person left. This is going to be going to Isuba, picking up the first round here on steps as Andrew comes flying over the hill for a little bit of style points as well. Yeah, I mean, good closure there from Isuba in the end. I think they could have killed the STRV still when he was in that position. But Danny was like, you know what, you didn't kill the STRV, you get me instead. Yeah. So a little bit of a gift there. He stayed very long. I mean, he did the initial damage on Frawley, which was nice. But then he stayed for that one more shot. And then all the guys from Isuba were like, hey, Danny, how are you doing? This is what we were saying at the start of the match as well. Danny is a player who's capable of doing potentially lots of damage, but he's also one of the players, and this is something that's, that's rampant across Isuba and in the way gun runners. Players just not getting out of the way when they should and doing like a little individual errors and stuff, getting caught out. Yeah, they don't. neither of them seem to have that real superstar player. I mean, yeah, Unji is a little bit of that, but still, he's lacking experience to fulfill that role completely. Where, like, where we see the other teams like Stefan and such, Ilya, yeah, yeah, etc. Yeah. Et either of these teams is kind of missing that player that never really makes a mistake, because we have seen it where both these teams really cost, and sometimes those failed individual plays. Protalicek comes to mind, because it's obviously the, the biggest one. Yeah. You're never going to let that one lie, are you? It's just whenever I think of Isuba, I think of Protalicek. That, that one play. Well, let's have a look at the stats and see the damage done here in that battle where we can actually see which vehicle came out on top. Well, Andrew here in the battle is actually doing a very nice amount of damage. 3.7 in his batch at Marathon as well. But, you know, damage not that important. It's not a super carry. What it was important is the counter push they did across the across the rails into the, the guns of gunrunners take them down because they know they had one extra. So even when they lost that first batch out, uh, who pretty much instantly got removed, who was that? I think it was combat even, I think, was that batch out. 
Combat was one of the first ones down. Yeah, yeah. combat. But combat pushed over at the start when he tried to go in. So for the guy, yeah. it doesn't matter for them because he did some damage, which is still more than what Danny did, and they had that one extra gun, and then they had the auto loaders to quickly remove the SCRV, the 140, and then just reload and continue. Mm -hmm. I mean, Unji coming down here tenth place, and it was Andrew actually coming out in first place. That was quite interesting. Now going into round two, do you think we're going to get any surprise picks here from Gun Hunters? Hopefully not. I mean, if they want to win this match, let's keep it pretty standard, boys. Hopefully. Nice and calm. Yep. Nothing. No surprises. Surprises not good right now. What they need to focus on is like Mojo saying, like keep it, keep it simple, keep it simple, and just make it polished. Make sure that you're getting the moves when you need to get the moves, and then you can kind of react better to what the enemy's trying to do. I think it will be fairly standard. I mean, we can see Suba maybe play with the RU from Frawley to climb on that eastern side, and then gun runners, I'm saying 90% sure, going to play with art artillery on steps attack. Maybe even M53, because we know Danny really likes that RT. They can do that if they want. I mean, RT for sure, and then probably standard towards the left-hand side of the map, one two line, and is Suba might defend the rails, they might not, that's the option as defender, I mean, yeah. like, you, are, you you can go defend the rails, which is hard to achieve against an RT, but it's possible. Well, let's have a look at the lineups and see if there is any surprises coming out from any team. Grill of 15. Uh, grill, not a super surprise, it's not the greatest tank for steps because it's very open and, you know, you don't always get those good shots and you need to swing your gun a lot. You're shooting a long distance, that cupolas, etc., etc., of tanks. But if Suba with the 113, with the 140, might look to defend the rails because they have that RU, they can climb onto this 9 0 line. But let's see. Let's see if Gunrunners can do it with, with the RT. Let's see if we can make some solid connections. Yep. It's going to be interesting. Let's jump into the battle and find out here for round two of steps. Isuba, blue side are defending against Gunrunners, red side attacking. Now we have seen from Isuba doing an absolutely perfect defense here, Daki, having both of the climbs done before, where we've seen the RU pick up the climb on the zero line, and we've seen a batch at, I think it was combat going up the A3 first time round as well. So there we have Frawley actually. He did the quick one actually, so he saves some precious time. Nice form, he makes it, but you can see Suba deciding rails. No, we're not going to try against the RD. We're just going to go back and to old and go 9-0 very quickly with four bad shots. Let's see where this rotation ends. Could this go against them, though? If someone, if they push, if, if gun runners were pushing on the rails and nobody gets spotted, they could then potentially triple cap? I personally think it's very hard to defend this. You know, I think it's very hard to defend 9-0 line like this and defend the one base because with the Gorilla, with the I-7, you can take that C4, C5 position, we see used a lot. You can get all the angles you need to pretty much cover off anything. I mean, you can get into that E1 pocket, you can climb the one line mountain. You can have all the angles of crossfire you could possibly need to shut down um, you know, the resets. You mm. know, anything that comes out will be able to be shut down really hard. And this is a very, very aggressive rotation from Isuba. Yeah, I was just, I wanted to ask earlier on, is it beneficial for a team to ever go aggressive? Here I, I don't like this defending. rotation that much because if they had somebody in J1, if they had somebody on that hill part, the game would already be over almost. And I think Danny might be trying to do that climb. And if he can still get up there in time, Oh, let's see, because he's going to be spotted when he's trying to climb. Tomasek spots him. Danny slides back down the hill. Can he get himself into cover? He does quickly. Shot coming out, it looks like from combat, actually connected with him. Missed with the second one. Danny didn't make that climb and has to be careful now as he backs off and gets himself into a new area. Had he made that climb, that could have gave his team vital information, but he is able to say, hey, there's at least one tank over here. I did get them a lot of information. Marta will just be doing this climb here. So yes, they don't have the one line mountain, like they don't have K1, but they still could go back towards the cap. I was going to say, Leron, I liked how when the artillery shot, when Saigo shot, Danny was waiting behind him to then boost him along quicker, to help him re reposition quicker. Doing a little train with the Batcha and the um, M4 and the M43. Now, you're attacking here as gun runners, Daki. How are you going to how are you gonna then push on here? 
as gun runners. I mean, I'd personally still try to bait them out with the cap, but they seem contempt to go back and it's going to be hard because they need to clear out a lot of angles and I don't think this is the best choice for them. Danny taking another shot there as he pushes forward again. So he's a bit of the sacrificial spar for his team, but I'm not sure that's the best of use for a bat chat. Uh, There's just too many angles here for his tube. I mean, they have the 140 there as well. They have combat in that K4 or 5 pocket. They have EDT there. They even have Froley coming back off that climb. And I don't think this is a fight that gunrunners can win, that they can take or they should take even at this point because there's just too many angles for them to deal with, even with that IS-7. If they want to clear them out, they have to push forwards. They have to get into the gun line, the 140, the bad shots behind, the 113. Froly now coming off as well. I'd much rather see them go back towards that cap, just take that E1 pocket, keep the middle safe and play from there because they know Isuba's locked down in that area. They could force them into a reaction, but counter pushing here, I don't know if it's going to work out. Shot being missed there on Storm. Now, the thing is, is whatever gun runners do, e Subar are aiming, pre aiming at areas already. So, the minute Sixth Sense comes up, it's already too late. They already have a couple of seconds. Our team might die here towards them. Frolly, though. Frolly pushing in the back. Is he going to get a spot on Saigo? He sees, uh, he sees Unji. He sees Unji. Is he going to carry on? I mean, he can use the rails. He can take He's going to load shot. a tree and destroy that grilla. 100. <laughs> Okay, maybe not. But now Frawley's spotted out. I mean, so this is an interesting area for a fight. We don't normally ever get fights down here like this. Nope. But I think Gun Ernest is right now gearing up to push, though, because Andrax joined Enrico Martin's coming here as well. No. Um, They're going for it. Okay, well, let's actually listen into the team so we can see how things are going here with the team. No, no, no. No, Zabiju nám Artuela, jo? Jo. Pojď, ty vlevo, ty dva vlevo, ty dva vlevo. Martuo, zabiju ho. Můžete mi někdo hrpnout s tou 113kou? Já ti zkusím pomoct. Ne, 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 můžu ti ser na to, odejď sám, odejď sám. Já jedu pryč. Já nabím. Já si nabiju asi chytlit, protože... Kompat dostavit, kompat, kompat má málo. Já musím dolo, já musím. Já jdu pro to ručko, 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 ale já mám ještě nabím, já nevím 25. Zkusím se schovat před tím ručkem, máme otak. Já můžu dát Lukinovi, já můžu dát Lukinovi. Jeden bane na ránu, já si potřebuji nabit, abyl to ručko. Bacha, to je třináctka. Hej, oni jdou pryč, jedou pryč odzáň. Oni jdou pryč, jedou pryč odzáň. Oni se chtěl zadat ten já potřebuji pomoc, on má lepší, kdyby on, on mě neprobí. Ale potřebuji pokryt ten zbytek. 420 čas, pohoda. Strom, já strom, já bacha na, na, jdu pro to ručku, ručku jedem, jedem. Já se dívám já na to. Já, já za ním nepojdu, já jsem nice, tady jenom dobrý. Nice storma. Hej, 140 storma ti budu čas. On, on píkne ne, ne, nemůže, nemůže. Nemůže, nemůže, nemůže. Já se dívám na toho bata, jo, nahoře. Ale furt mi se může kdokoliv přijet. Už mě, ručko, ručko, ručko. ručko. Storma tohle jste? Pušou. Baťáka, baťáka, baťáka. Já zabiju to 113, já zabiju to 113. Dej mu, dej mu jednu. Já mám volet na 140. Já jsem ho... Hej, potřebuji pomoc. Dám mu ránu, dám mu ránu. Já nabím, já nabím, já nabím. Za, zabij toho bata. Marťo, zabij ho. Ouncel jsem ho, pomám, už mi došina. Je tam Andrew na ránu. Já nabím. Já zkusím Andrew. Marťo, odjeď, Marťo, odjeď. Marťo, odjeď. Mají dva baty na ránu, píčo. Já zkusím tady... Já, já mám 15 sekund reload. Jako on jde, on bude chtít na mě, Andrew. Já ti, já ti zabiju kombata za 10 sekund. This one's going right to the wire here, Daki. Three on three at the moment, but Lukin has all the HP for the Suba. You could hear there on the team speak. I mean, you don't have to understand uh, the reaction from Storm, and he didn't <laughs> kill the one with three. He's like, <gasps> no! <laughs> but, you know, they can they can easily win this, because indeed all the HP is on Lukin. He is a 140, he's a single shooter. If Danny can get a nice clip on towards him, he even gets ammo racked. Lukin getting clipped on at the moment. Storm coming around for a shot as well. Storm doesn't get the shot out. Another ammo rack. shot over. Looking, ammo racked again though, can Danny finish him off? He can take a shot, Danny. Martin's getting shot in the background though by Combat. Great overwatch and covering fire there. Andrew's on a one shot. If he wants to come in and try and help Looking, Combat's on a one shot as well. I don't know, Daki, it's still really difficult to call this one. The thing is, Danny at this point has 705 HP, 320 from the, ba uh, from the 140 and 490 from the bat shot will make it so he cannot survive anything that peaks against him. It's just too much. Even with low rolls, he should always go down. And Martin actually gets picked up by Andrew. 
Andrew getting the one-on-one -on -one there with Martin as Martin tried to come around the supports. All up to Danny now. He doesn't have enough to clip out everyone. He is attacking. He has to make the move. He's going to get shot at here by Lucan. Combat on Overwatch again. And then the final shot comes in there from Andrew. Well played to Isuba. Gunrunners so close. So close, but not close enough. Uh, they stormed there. Not killing the 1-1-3. One, one, lost them a lot of HP. At that point as well, but still this counter push, I think Isuba should have always have held that off. I mean, I don't even know how they got so close to losing that because they had all the positions they needed. They lost that one batch out on the corner instantly for free. They did not trade well enough. They came around with three tanks, killed that guy and didn't even do anything in return. Ideally, you want to pretty much kill a batch out for, for that and it didn't happen. And then looking, having all the HP, I mean, if... <sighs> Oh, it almost it almost worked out, but some small mistakes from both yeah. teams going against them, and then especially gun runners. I, I I still don't like that they went for this counter push. Uh, I honestly I don't think this was worth it. I don't think this was the best idea, even in this situation. I think capping might have worked out better for them. Storm coming top damage there, and I seven over us next in combat for Isuba Martin high up the board again, um, Batcha. I mean, yeah, it was unusual because they were the attacking team, but they wanted to come back and fight the defenders when their line had already been set. So no matter what they did, whatever movement they did, they were going to take shots straight away. Pretty much all they had to do almost was have the I-7 in the middle, making sure that if it's too bad with it today, they spot it, that E1 pocket, and then put like two guys on the cap to bait it out and spot every other angle. And then if they come in, just shoot them down as they're approaching. As soon as you spot them, leave the cap and choose a side to counter push. Because they're not all gonna come from the same side unless they all push one two line. But that again, it would be obvious. And they wouldn't be able to get to that E1 pocket, that elevator position. So they would have to split it up. So Yasuba would have, I mean, Gunrunners would have been able to push off the cap mm -hmm. into an area and overmatch it most likely and at least get the RU for free because he would probably go into spot. And with Unji, they probably could have killed him. I, I feel like capping would have worked better for them because they could have baited Isuba to drive into their guns if they positioned them well all around the map. Yeah, at least with a cap, they would be in control of the fight. Where in that time, in that situation, they weren't in control of the fight. It was Isuba 100% just saying, okay, we're going to wait here. We're going to make them come back to us. And Isuba seems pretty aware of how gunrunners would react because they had six tanks there getting thrown off the hill really quickly as well, which can cost you. Yeah. Because if Gunrunners was just doing a rotation through the north for like one or two bad shots, he would be dead as well. But yeah, Isuba seemed to realize what Gunrunners wanted to do. Doesn't seem to be the Gunrunners we saw yesterday, does it? Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay, now next map we're going to be going into Prokhorovka. We did say though, we did say that Isuba could win this map 2-0. Mm -hmm. When we began, because they have the better stats, so they should be the better team on it. But Prokhorovka is the map that gun runners played a lot more than his two bus, so perhaps they can pick it up 2-0 here and then we go 1-1 one -one towards tiebreaker potentially it could be setting it up now we're just waiting on everything to be ready at our end and we can jump into the lineups and show you guys what teams are going to be bringing into this battle now what do you expect to see here from isuba or gun runners in fact so Okay, Gunrunners is attacking. No, no, I just wanted to see who's attacking and right. who's defending. Uh, Gunrunners is attacking. We probably see them do something again similar with that one one double one one three or double I7, whatever they prefer with the, with, with the Gorilla, which is what they've played a lot on attack. And from Insuma, I don't, maybe an SDRV, bad chats, maybe an SDB, one one three, you know, standard. Okay, well, let's have a look at the lineups here for the first round of Pro Krovoga and see which vehicles are being brought by the teams. Double IS-7 and an S-Tank there from Isuba on defense, Taki. Yeah, IS-7 is good to hold that middle, obviously, because of their turret being pretty much unpenetratable. E5 works in the middle as well, but they have the Coppola. If you get unlucky, you know, Gorilla shoots your Coppola, but it's 750 HP down. Gunrunners, IS-7, 113, Gorilla. Standard setup for them. They like those double heavy tanks. We saw how um, Ding shot them down yesterday on their attack. Yes, on their attack it was. Maybe Gunrunners can do better against the Suba, though. Well, there's one way to find out. Let's find out here on Prokhorovka.
Prokhorovka, one of the first maps in the game. Teams start at the regular spawn points as they do in standard battles. Bases are separated from each other by the railway, so the defending team has to choose whether to send their vehicles to the left side, playing them in the center, or to the right of the railway, occupying the hill and a part of the village. The attacking team usually attacks the first base. However, the teams often go for face-to-face -face confrontation, seven on seven, in the hilly terrain at the center. That's why both teams frequently use vehicles with good gun depression angles and sturdy turrets. Okay, and we are underway here. Gun runners on the red side are on the attack, and Isubot on the blue side are on the defense. Yep, they're just going for a classic split here. Gun runners, you can see them move around. 113 I7 splitting up towards the middle. Obviously, Subot does have that RT available to them, but that does mean they need to put a batch out in the bushes, which is going to be over Rus here. It seems like. He's going to be the dedicated spotter for the Suba lineup. That is obviously not ideal either because committing a tier 10 to a bush where usually tier 8s play, if there's some push from gun runners, they catch this batch out of guard, etc. etc. You know how this can go. Unji's just monitoring the eastern side rotation, and gun runners need to be careful playing in this middle area with this double heavy tank setup because of that RT. If they wait too long to make their move, these heavy tanks could be half HP before the game even starts. Well, KV-122 is on offer at the moment. I don't even have that. I don't have it either, actually, I don't think. I feel like Danny should have hit this shot here against uh, Tomasek, but didn't, and Enrico might feel the pain of driving in the middle. Just a little tickle. Just a little tickle, a little reminder from artillery that he's there. In his driver diet. <laughs> Rip. IS, oh, 113 driver, okay, I was going to say IS-7 driver dies quite a lot, but yeah, it's one of the only things you can shoot at frontally. 113 does take a lot of module damage though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like you get ammo racked, you get ammo racked again, you lose your driver, you lose your gunner, and then you're like, okay, this is a standard 113 game. <laughs> uh, Danny in the meantime. Oh, that was a better connection. No, that was actually no connection. He okay, took the damage before. Okay, he took damage before it yeah, and yeah. still showing. Ah, okay. Hector, Hector, Hector. Now the question is, what are they going to do? Because if they want to push the 1 2 line, and they wanted to use the 113. Well, with a dead driver, let's just say he's not rushing anywhere. I mean, they have jack of all trades, obviously, so it is not as severe, but it is still a factor. It's going to keep chipping away at Danny's health here. 360 there, damage on him again. And this is, I mean, this has happened to Danny before in this situation. This happened against Gohard, I believe. He just got his health chipped, 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 chipped all the way down. Just to stop peeking for now, and you can see Enrico now made it into the 1-2 line. You're going to see the choo-choo train, if you remember. Behind the IS-7, yep. Behind the 1-1-3. One, one, three. One, one, three this time, okay. They have to be careful about one thing, though, because if RT zooms in on them, he could detrack every single one of them in that train. <laughs> okay, here we go. Saigo gets spotted and gets hit for 800. Two bat chats already spread out from behind Enrico and Andrax. Thomas Tech gets the kill on Saigo, they've already lost their scout as the shots come into Enrico. I don't know why Martin's sitting so far out to the side, because they're just going to focus him. And they do, as Prolly gets the kill on Martin. Enrico actually hits a bit of wreckage there from Saigo as Andrax and Unji try to jump over here onto... What was it? Went onto, onto Overus there, but this push from Gunrunners has came to a crashing halt. This push from Gunrunners is dead. Frohly's still unspotted right now, and they need to kill these bad shots if they want to make any significant change into this round. I mean, okay, Danny got a kill on artillery, but you still have four tanks here from Isuba on full health. Oh, well, we make that three tanks of full health. Tomasek now being focused by here from the remaining tanks, but Unji and Undrax are on reload, and Frolly can just happily shoot for all he's worth right now. Frolly is having the game of his life. He's being so happy with this. Like, he can just sit there and farm. And Martin, I have no idea what he was doing. And Frolly is just here, like... Chilling. Chilling pretty much. This is exactly what Mocha did so the first time Utopia did this. And Mocha just sat in the exact same position. It was like, hey, look, tank's coming at me and nobody can see me. Looking, getting a shot there into Danny's face once again in the IS-7 as he's aiming over towards the trees. But no one's going to shoot him over from that area. And Andrax is running all the way back to try and get himself unspotted again. But nope, he is respotted here right now and shot's going to come back into him. 
This was a bad execution from uh, Gunrunners. A good hold from Asuba, obviously, coming out. I mean, doing what they had to do, hit the shots, kill the tanks, Frohly just happily farming in the back lines. Danny and Andrax don't have much to do in this round. There's Luke in combat. We're going to close it out in 3 is 0. Yep. Yep, it's, it's the ding effect. It's the ding effect. Once the team defeats Ding, they their lose. next match, they, they don't do so great. Now, Gunrunners are the team that's beat Ding the strongest. And in their next match, they're they're winning or they're losing the hardest. Rip on Drex, boys. Rest in pepperonis as combat picks up the kill and gets me vital fantasy points. <sighs> of course, but you know, as soon as as soon as Overus got spotted in that bacha, the rotation should have been the one one three should have went into the hole, you know, the hole on the side, the little hole down area next to the the trees he should have gone in there martha and i don't even know what to say about <laughs> that I mean, I mean why why do that uh no not sure but what they should have done is they should have swung out they knew the bachas were there because they were starting to get shot at they knew that the strv was there which is obvious right so they pushed they should have come out killed overus on the side continued and then killed the i7 as well who was there as well if they kill that bacha and they kill that IS-7, they can continue because there was just one IS-7 left on A6. They can drive back over the middle ridge and such and such. But Storm also died in his gorilla somehow. Somehow, I don't think he even did a shot. So they should have went east, killed the Batshat, killed the IS-7 and then continued pushing or something and actually not drive into the SCRV and allow him to farm 4k damage. Yeah, 4k damage, 3 kills. I mean, whoever gets that S tank in that position must be like, okay, I could... I could potentially clean up this battle, or it could all go wrong and the fight could happen on the other side of the map. It's just a bad play from Storm that one shot, okay, so 574. But uh, it's just, you know, like that split second decision somebody should have made, like we should have, we should go over here. We should go over here, drive into Overus, kill him, continue, drive to kill the IS-7, and then they can either continue and kill the next IS-7 or try and reload and sit in the dip as the two heavy tanks cover them but three tanks here with almost nothing done gorilla are you bad shot i mean if they went over they killed over us they killed the IS-7 for sure as well the guys in the back line from the suba have to peek up on the a2 a3 position then the heavies could shoot them as well the heavies could shoot towards them and the gorilla could shoot towards them as well they, they would die probably and I think Gunners would have won the round in that yeah. case. I mean, Martin had no shots fired even. I mean, they were behind the I don't IS even know seven. why he drove. Yeah, he drove behind the 113 and then he drove out of the line. Behind, behind the 113, sorry. We know the position, the, the tactic there. You drive up in a, a train line, basically, so that the heavy at the front absorbs all the shot. But the minute you have a bat chat that moves out from that and the bat chat spotted, they're just going to focus the bat chat because they want to get rid of the damage dealer. I mean, and tracking shots are going to try and fall from the heavies, but... I mean, what, are you going to have a free shot in the bad chat? Of course you're going to take it. Of course, and we saw how long Martin <laughs> lasted. <laughs> in the blink of an eye. Now here's the lineups going into around two. Gunrunner's Daki going here with two STBs and an IS-7 on defense. Isuba taking a Kranwagen and a Gorilla on attack. Hmm, Kranwagen, let's see how that works out. It is, you know, not the greatest on long distance. And Gunrunner's here with double STB. Probably going to look to go very aggressive in the beginning, in the middle of the map. I mean, it's really uh, only where the STBs work, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them drive middle with most of their forces and then perhaps go towards 8-9, try to get flanking shots, exactly like we saw against Ding. It will be interesting. Now let's jump into Prokhorovka round two here. Are Gunrunners going to bring it back to 3-1? Or are Isuba going to step ahead onto 4-0 and that vital match point as well? Isuba blue team attacking to Gunrunner's red team defending. You can see already a lot of tanks here from Gunrunner's moving towards the eastern side. Not as aggressive as I thought they would go. They're just going a little bit split up. Just the I-7 and SDB in the middle. But Isuba posturing very, very heavily towards 1-2 line. Maybe they can catch this bad shot here in the city though. But I don't think probably going to allow himself to be uh, cut out. He's probably going to go over the rails here. At least he should. No? He's going to continue driving? He's spotted, but nobody has a shot on him. And they were a little bit too far away. So he'll, he'll be safe. He'll be fine. Is he going to go over the rails? 
Right, it's going to go over the rails. It's going to hang about and go over to where Positive was, <laughs> which wasn't a great place for him when it was Ding Gun Runners. It's just Danny spotting into the one-two line, so I wonder how that's going to work out because he needs to get out of there if they drive towards him. And they still have time to work with RT on towards Will. If Will gets some solid connections from that RT, he needs to get out of there as well. EDT could be on cleanup duty here if he sees anybody. But Isuba at the moment, and they're starting to do the push, Daki. We see a choo choo train coming from Isuba here right yeah, now. Yeah, but as the well. entire lineup from Gun Runners has backed off at this point. You can see that they are already out of there. Will has repositioned as well. And they're not going to fall for this. And they're going to start taking the zero line here, which is the correct thing to do, obviously, because you need that position so you can go to K8 and such. I mean, the one thing here is that Isuba can put Crown Wagon on the cap, but it's not the greatest because, you know, it doesn't 100% work, but it can work. But the RT, they don't have the TRA to really put onto the cap. So at what point here did Isuba go, ah, at this point, they're already like, okay, yeah. it's clear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, we've been hoodwinked. They, they, they knew it was coming and they've moved. Now, do they play for base one, Daki, or do they try and do something into base two? Well, they have to play for base one at this point in time because there's just too many times from Gunner and it's on 7890 line. RT's going to run as fast as he can because obviously he needs to stick with the team you never know that he goes like uh well you know i'm gonna go for uh going for a little hunt little hunt today and now all, all of the pressure will be on will to hold on as long as he can and somebody from a super has to go on the cap it will be the 113 and now it will be gorilla and lorraine versus this is7 and will will have to get the resets Danny just repositioning here from the top of the map to another space in between the rails and gets a little tap in the face for his troubles for that. Yeah, you always think it has to be he's like, oh my god, it's so good hold on. Until you get like shot in the turret yeah. <laughs> and it goes through it. Like, ow, where did that come from? I mean it was what, 360? Um a bit of a low roll from something. So far, still so good for gun runners because Bill hasn't been spotted out. I mean, the 113 from Lucan. Well, Bill has been spotted out, never mind. Uh, I mean, Bill hasn't received any damage, that's what I was meant to say, which is vital because with six minutes left, time is not that great for his two, but it's still fine, right? But they need to start getting some connections on towards that IS7 uh, in the next one or two minutes. They need to start doing solid damage towards him because they need him to be low before they push in. Oh, can you land a shot? We'll find out in just a second. Nope. Nope. So, so far, so good here for Will, right? I mean, five minutes, 40 seconds. You know, at four minutes, they'll start pan panicking almost. Danny again playing peeky on that rail. Has the potential to do a lot of damage here, but also has the potential to take a lot of damage. Any one of the bat chats could lay into him. Now, you know what I still don't like, what I'm waiting for still to happen is, you know, when, when a team plays like this with the I7, almost always at one point they push the I7 right with bad shots. For like a team to leave like two bad shots on A6 in the bushes just, just over the rails and just sit there and be like waiting for those bad shots to push and as soon as they do, just clip out on them and kill them. I'm surprised nobody's done that yet. When you play like this, to have two bad shots go back into A5, play in those bushes behind there so they can't be spotted. And as soon as anybody pushes Will, they just obliterate them. Like, they literally just kill those bad shots pushing towards them. Oh, potential sneaky angle here under the rails. Nah, but it's not going to hit that. Cram wagon from there? No. He needs side to penetrate. It's an RU as well, from Saigo's view. Or, wow. Well, okay. Okay, Saigo, we're going to play it that way, eh? That's a nice connection onto the crown wagon. <laughs> it's an exceptional connection onto the like crown wagon. Like, you see wagon. where Enrico is now? Just pass that into those bushes. Now, Will shooting into Frolly, who's blocking, looking. We're down to 10 seconds. Will needs to come over and do something. So does Danny. 
Eight seconds. Danny might not get a chance to do this unless E Super can focus him quickly. Three, two, one. It's probably it took the shot again. Oh, there's the reset from Danny into looking vital when he needed it. Now E Super can make stuff work for them because in the meantime the Crown Wagon took out well and E Super have the gun advantage. Yeah, Suba are in the driving seat on this round and they need to start closing out the game though at this point and I don't know, they, they should start doing it soon. Well, let's have a listen into E Suba's team speak and see what they have planned. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Enrico, Enrico, Enrico! Enrico, pojďte, hluky ne. Nabijem. Jede, pojď mi. Kombat, já potřebuji ránu. Potřebujem, potřebujem rány. A tři jedy, pojďte, pojďte. Dobrý, dám ho, dám ho, dám ho, dám ho. Jede, jede mi, jede mi. Ho nedám. Hluky ráno. Kolik mi jde? Tak pojď, pojď, pojď. Ej, pojď, ne, do nich, push. Jo, pojď, jeďte. Enrico má tři venku. Ondrak si mám za tři. Tenhle ten baťák má vystřílet. Enrico má tři venku. Dám Nice. 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 And there we have it. Just Saigo left here for gun runners, and he's dead. Well, there we go. Just like that. You heard the team reaction as soon as you saw, for example, Enrico rolling over the tracks there. Both well, Enrico, 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 Enrico. They already know? had the win at that point, yeah. to be fair. I mean, they couldn't really lose it anymore. I mean, uh, just that Frawley getting in front of the 113 was enough for them not to be able to reset. Boys, you need to have a secondary plan, but... Well, yeah. Danny came over to reset. Yeah, but, yeah. but he lost so much HP yeah. for that. Yeah, and then he took out the IS-7 right after that, so then you can't go back to You can't really play doing. like that against RT, but, you know, especially with an IS-7 that is not able to peek over far enough to reset and then will had to commit together with danny will got wrecked will die danny died storm came over storm died it's just from bad bad to worse but then on the flip side it's going well for isuba yeah they're doing the things right and gun runner seems to be on pretty hard tilt because you know things it's, it's like the this ding factor it's the ding factor totally anytime a team beats ding they seem to lose i mean i could be wrong with um Utopia here, but I'm pretty sure everyone's then lost the game. Everyone, everyone. The three teams that have done it this season. Three teams. Insane. Let's have a look at the stats and see what the yeah, damage... Insane is in one of those teams. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start with the puns already, Daki. It's too early. Too early. Um, Andrew coming out top damage there in the grill. Enrico coming in second in the bat chat for Gunrunners. Yeah, Enrico was also the last tier 10 to survive, so there is that. And Andrew had the connections on towards the middle, on towards the gorilla, the batchat speaking, such and such. And, you know, gun runners would have almost been better to just try and hold one too at this point because you saw what happened once the Suba had the positions, they still had lots of time left, six minutes. And we said they need to start making some solid connections at that point, and they did. Frawley went in front of the 113, Will didn't get the reset, you know, it just went from bad to worse. And then they sacrificed three tanks just. For one reset, one reset with four minutes left, yeah. that just gives you so much time. Well, only actually firing two shots all battle and connecting with one of them. Man, it's not cool. Wouldn't like to be in his shoes in that situation. But hey, if you're told to go to a position and do something, you got to do it. If that's what the field commander says. I still believe in gun runners completely. Really? <laughs> you have to, you know, they'd be ding. They beat Ding! Bowtie's looking really sharp on you, mate. Oh. 
I will, I will punch I will, you I will, in. I will, I will punch you in the gut. In the gut. We can have another bet. You know, if you want. Nah, not no. yet. We we'll do it. It needs to be between you and Mojo and see how you and Mojo who can do it. Keep. We'll keep the bow tie. We'll just use that bow tie. So that'll be like a trade. Whoever whoever loses a bet has to wear the bow tie for for one cast that week. I think that's that's a fair way of doing it. I mean, look how happy you look. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Now we're going to go to our next map, Daki, which could be our final map here, which is going to be Ghost Town. We've seen some epic battles on this map. Uh, yeah, we have. Uh, but, you know, gun runners are going to be attacking first. So I couldn't, I couldn't be worse. I couldn't be worse. <laughs> okay. Well, let's have a look at the lineups and see the vehicles being used. Do we get a Type 5 Heavy? No, but an E4? Really? They're doing this again? With a Scorpion G this time. Uh, Scorpion G probably on zero line. It has nice APCR rounds. Don't forget that it has high pen. Uh, it does a lot of damage, so it's a nice sniper tank. But it needs to get those connections as well. So he's going to be probably playing in the zero line. We know where the Udes is going to play. I mean, that's like that's like not even a question anymore at this point. He's going to climb A1. And then with the I-7, it looks like Gunrunners are going to try and play that number one base because the I-7 kind of tells that you want to play number one base. But... They can change it up if they want to. Well, let's find out. Will Isuba take the round, take the map, and take the match? Or can Gunrunners come back into this? Let's find out here on Ghost Town. Ghost Town. The first absolutely symmetrical map made especially for seven versus seven games. The teams start the battle on opposite sides. There are numerous ways to attack here. One of the bases is located in the central square, the other one at the top of the city. The hardest battles are usually fought for the top base, and this calls for the use of heavy tanks. Sometimes the teams choose fast tanks for spotting and base capturing. And here we go, Gunrunners red team are attacking into Isuba blue team defending. We've seen this before with Gunrunners, Daki, with the E4, and it didn't quite work. Well, actually, they were using an FE215B215183, 215 and it didn't quite work. So how's it going to work here with an E4? It's not really an ins uh, a pick that you like, is it? I don't really like the E4 that much, but it must have a reason if they pick it. They're both, well, I mean, it has that whole down position that it can take in zero line, which is exactly what's happening with both the Scorpion and the E4. The Scorpion's even boosting the effort to get in position, and Rico will go onto the cap. There's no surprises there. And again, the game will depend on to combat. If combat gets a connection onto the I-7 capping, that gives them extra time. If combat fails to reset, well... Combat will do it. Combat will If he do does it. it, he'll get you a nice amount of capture points, right? Uh, decap points. It's going to get me monster points right now. Now this... Scorpion, Saigo's going to be playing the Scorpion, got NGA in the back chat, Danny in the E4, potential big game for Danny here, he can do a lot of damage when he gets onto those high alpha tanks, and there's the cap started by Enrico. Enrico got onto the cap, no surprise, from that he she comes in instantly resets him, well, well. Decap points combat, well done laddie. He already got a few. Tomasek. Chasing around Unji here, but Unji's not going to hang around. This is the notorious, was it Rage Quit Corner? Ooh, or that corner. Oh, they're using shielding. the Scorpions. Ah, it's, it's got a turret. It's pretty tall, it's pretty tall, you know, the hole. Yeah. The, 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 hole. Turret, the turret has holes in it, though. Yeah, but it's the hole that they all, all they need is the hole to be big enough to shield, and I think it is. Yep, 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 yep. So there's going to have to be another reaction, an EDT. Look at the damage he's taken. EDT down to half health and has 113 from a fight in the middle of the town there. And Combat has no angle onto this. He has none. And none. Rico is able to get shots across and not risk his gun being targeted as well by Combat. So Combat can't actually connect. So they have two options here. Either push in into the dead alley or try to get to the C6-7 position to reset from the corner. And EDT is paying even more for it. He's that guy that gets wrecked by the E4. Storm getting the kill here on EDT. Now, Danny takes a massive amount of damage here. Dead gunner, dead loader, damaged engine, damaged fuel tank. I probably was looking connecting in with him. Oh, Amorak over us onto Will. And that's going to swing this fight on Death Alley as we see Isuba pushing in here to kill off Ondrax as well. 
It's the first time Isu actually gets the Amorak in their favor, but they still need to reset. They do reset on to Enrico, but the game's not over yet. If Storm picks up Lucan here, well, Lucan's a little bit too much HP for that, but he gets a nice connection anyways, a little bit of a low roll. The HP is completely even. It's just the gun in the game that's the difference. Gun in the game. Combat's going to try and get a side shot in here to Enrico as he moves in to help out in the town. But Enrico stopped. He knows that there's a crossfire. And Enrico can actually pick up the kill on Lucan. And Enrico's coming in here heavy with all the health. But he's running into Frolly and Overus in auto loaders. And they're going to clip out into him. If yeah, we get Overus before he dies, and Frolly will be reloading very long after that. They just need to make sure they can trade on to Andrew after Enrico goes down. And Enrico actually survives. Andrew needs to turn his turn and finish him. And he's face hugging right now. That was a bad miss there at the end. That last shot looks like it perhaps hit the tracks of Enrico, which means Andrew can now pick up Enrico, but now Andrew has to be careful of the crossfire there from Unji and Storm waiting to wreck someone as well with the gun from the E100. Yeah, the thing is, a lot of the HP here is onto combat, and combat is an Udes who's out of the fight. Storm is the final factor here, has almost 2,000 HP. If he can get onto Thomas, they get onto Andrew, even connect onto Frolly, it will make a big, big difference. And Unji is just waiting here for anybody to try and challenge onto Storm. It looks like Frolly has all his health at the moment, trying to pick out which way to come in. Unji can't come round behind him, neither can Danny Reel, so Frolly might try and trade with Storm here. Storm taking 400 damage there though, looks like perhaps Thomasek. Andrew. Andrew actually getting the shot in there. Now Andrew's now Reel is going to swap position with Frolly. So Frolly works a little bit better in this position, but I think Unji Needs to start making his play towards Tomasek and that batch that he should, you know, try and flank around to try and kill him, I think. Because Andrew has no shots. They don't obvi obviously they don't know this. And Storm has to fight with uh Frolly here. But I really, really think like Unji should be flanking towards Tomasek and taking him down. Now Danny here, the big problem he has is he's got a dead loader and he's got a dead gunner so his accuracy is going to suck and his reload time it's is like, going to suck as well it's like a potato e100 yep but, but Danny, he i think he'll try to peek he'll try to peek he'll try to peek against thomas there because he's used to otherwise anyways he can do massive both danny and storm can do massive damage if they connect but they need to connect that's the danger well danny's been spotted now so he won't be doing it anymore i think or probably going to clip out into storm there's one Two, three, one more. In the meantime, Unji gets killed by Tomasek. Unji coming round as well. Danny's coming round. I mean, it's two on three here. Shot coming back out there from Andrew, but Unji picks up the kill on Andrew. I mean, it's still 50-50, but the HP advantage is with Isuba and Daki. This looks like it's going to be 5-0. Uh, it looks like it, but it's not over yet. I kind of feel like Unji should have traded onto the Kran wagon of Frolly at least, but he didn't. And now Unji's doing. Danny's looking at the wrong direction. Danny, 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 why do that? Why do that? He's dead. Like Frolly knew you were there the whole time. Frolly clips out into Danny. Only Unji is left, and Combat can just rush him. Frolly could just rush him if they want. Unji is on the attacking team. He has to do something here. He can't just sit out and wait for the clock to run down. And this is, I mean, it's going to be play of the century if Unji can somehow make this. At this point in time, I have no clue where Danny was looking because Unji could have easily spotted that for him. That's a complete fail, utter fail from him. He was out of the fight for so long in that zero line position as well. That's why we don't like it. Unji spotted off Frolly here though. And Frolly, luckily enough, not sitting in that position because we know what can happen if you sit in there. Hellfish remembers. What would have hit Danny though? Would it have been an E100? Killing a loader and a gunner? Anything. Just through the side and two crew members? 